begin our look at sports with the games affected by the coronavirus. This has been the trend of late, but the seriousness of all of this has certainly been magnified. The last 48 hours have been nothing short of remarkable. The National Basketball Association said on Wednesday it was suspending the season until further notice after a Utah Jazz player tested positive for the coronavirus. The test result was reported shortly before the Jazz were due to play the Oklahoma City Thunder. The game was then scrapped. Jazz center Rudy Gobert, the league's two-time back-to-back defensive player of the year, is the player in question. The NBA thusly suspended, adding that it will use this hiatus to determine next steps for moving forward in regard to the coronavirus pandemic. Players from teams that the Jazz had played in the past 10 days were told to self-quarantine. ESPN reported Citing sources, those teams are the Cleveland Cavaliers, New York Knicks, Boston Celtics, Detroit Pistons, and Toronto Raptors. Allegedly, only the Knicks of all the teams in the NBA wanted to continue with the season. More than 126,000 people have been infected globally by the flu-like virus, and more than 4,600 have died. In the United States, about 1,300 people have been infected. The pandemic rocked the North American sports calendar on Wednesday, leading to the cancellation of the figure skating world championships and the announcement that college basketball's annual March Madness tournament would take place without fans in attendance. The men's and women's tourneys were later canceled altogether. The A-10 and Big East tournaments started in the Big Apple, but didn't make it past day two. For the men's basketball experienced the highs and lows of that 24 hours. Yonkers product Joel Soriano tallied 14 points and 12 rebounds to lift the Rams to a 72-52 win over George Washington in the first round of the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament. Here's more with head coach Jeff Neubauer. We haven't won all the games here down the stretch, but outside of probably two games, you know, we feel really good about the style of basketball we're playing. The reason our defense was so effective today is because we were able to ice ball screens. We were able to just keep the ball on one side, and that's the key to guarding GW. Now, Duquesne is not a ball screen team in the same way that GW is, so it's a totally different defensive game plan. But the answer tonight was that we iced ball screens, and our guys were very active, uh, high hands, deflected passes, very effective. In the process, 14-seeded Fordham advanced to face six-seeded Duquesne on Thursday until the tournament was canceled. St. John's also won its first-round matchup on Wednesday, only to have their second game on Thursday dismissed halfway through. That news came as more and more started to come out. A second player for the NBA's Utah Jazz tested positive for COVID-19. The team confirmed on Thursday, a day after the league said it was suspending the season until further notice. Utah's Donovan Spida Mitchell and Elmsford, New York native is the second confirmed case. The National Hockey League suspended its season on Thursday, too. The outbreak could prevent the league from awarding a Stanley Cup champion for only the third time in its history. Major League Baseball said it will delay its 2020 season's opening day by at least two weeks and halt spring training due to the coronavirus, joining other North American leagues whose season have been disrupted by the pandemic. The global sporting calendar is being shredded by the virus, with men's tennis shut down for six weeks, top European soccer leagues on hold, and of course the NBA and NHL suspended until further notice. Thankfully, some racing will go on, albeit without fans. Sunday's Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg will run as scheduled in IndyCar, but it won't have spectators due to the threat. After announcing Thursday morning there will be no general admission tickets sold for IndyCar's 2020 season opener. St. Petersburg confirmed Thursday afternoon that it, the weekend will be condensed from three days to two, with only crew members, media, and necessary race personnel permitted inside the street course. The race weekend will operate from Friday through Sunday with IndyCar on-track sessions limited to Saturday and Sunday. Finally, something sports-related to watch, Rena. Here's a preview of the race with two of the league's best. I think everybody's just excited, you know. I think especially when you live in, you know, the Midwest, everybody's uh, looking forward to getting, you know, to some some warm weather. I think some of us have had the luxury of doing uh, additional races, which is always good uh, before the season kicks off. Um, but yeah, I think just the the format of the IndyCar season right now and how long the off season is and how little testing there is, uh, I think it's just a lot of built up energy and, and people uh, eager to get going. So yeah, you know, I think there's there's no difference for me. Um, you know, I think everybody's just trying to prepare as, as well as possible and, and make the off-season, um, you know, gains and, and uh, development, um, and just try and tick off and, and fix the areas of you know weakness. I think you know that we had last year, but um, ultimately, yeah, excited to get going and, and can't wait, man. Uh, if you could start off the year on the right foot, it's, it's a positive thing. Um, you know, St. Pete is a 
is an interesting place. You know, it's, it's a very challenging street circuit, um, you know, and it's one that most guys have a lot of experience on. So it's always uh, very close and, and um, pretty tightly knit together in terms of, of the qualifying results. So, you know, you gotta you got to be on your A game for the first first race of the year, which is you know, always a little bit of a challenge having been out of the, out of the cars for a while. But as Scott said, you know, um, we've been lucky enough to, to have some races since the season finale in Laguna, so um, you know, feel feel pretty pretty excited to get the season going, and hopefully we can roll off the truck pretty strong and, and have a, a fairly event free event free weekend. NASCAR released a statement Thursday saying it will race this weekend at Atlanta Motor Speedway and next weekend at Homestead Miami Speedway, but attendance will be restricted to competitors, crews, officials, and other necessary personnel to conduct the race. IndyCar and NASCAR makes it through, at least for now, but that's not the story elsewhere in racing. Mc McLaren withdrew from the season-opening Australian Formula One Grand Prix in Melbourne on Thursday after a team member tested positive for coronavirus, fueling concerns about the race going ahead. And that was all that was needed. Now, Formula One season opening Australian Grand Prix is set to be called off. Same deal with MotoGP. The first two races were already nixed. Then came the postponement of the Circuit of the Americas in the U.S. in early April. That's in Texas. The U.S. race will be moved to November along with the upcoming James Bond film. No correlation there, but I'm upset about that, Rena, too. Even the New York Auto Show is delayed until August. The XFL also postponed later Thursday. And the Olympics could be next. At the urging of the President of the United States, Donald Trump said on Thursday, officials should consider delaying the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games for one year amid everything, noting that the summer event would not be the same without spectators. A few other notables are still intact at the moment, including the PGA, which moves forward just without fans. Let's hope this is only a 30-day hiatus for most of the leagues not in session. Those are the headlines. We hit the C list for one feel good story amidst all of this. Strongly considered providing a lengthy speech here in the C list about the virus, but instead I have elected to try and cheer up our fan base at home. Nonetheless, I will make one small comment. Agree or disagree with all of this, I can understand both sides of the argument, but I will say this. These protocols are being put in place to protect the health and welfare of the fans, teams, workers, and officials. It is in place to mitigate the risk of exposure. With that said, I leave you with this. A man so old by NBA standards that the league retired before he did. With the NBA season abruptly suspended Wednesday night due to the coronavirus pandemic, Vince Carter's 22-year career may have come to an unexpectedly sudden end. The 43-year-old thought it would be weird to call it quits with 15 games remaining on the schedule, but said he was at peace with everything. It's cool. Basketball's been good to me. I've enjoyed each and every moment of it, the good and the bad. If this is it, it's all good. That's what Vince said post-game, but not before leaving us with this gem. VC hit a crowd-pleasing three in the final seconds of the Atlanta Hawks' 136-131 overtime loss to the visiting New York Knicks. Not a bad way to go out if that's that. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Stay tuned. More open back after this.